Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial. And in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, I thought in the last lesson of our advanced exporting techniques from Media Composer and Symphony, we would take a look at exporting for post audio. Now, what I decided to do in this lesson is instead of going to a similar product like Pro Tools or something like that, we would go to a post audio application from a completely different company. So what we're going to do is we're going to export from Symphony and then we're going to go and we're going to hypothetically finish inside of Adobe's Audition. Two completely different companies, but you'll see the two applications can work hand in hand to give you the best possible end result. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Symphony and let's get started. Okay, so let's alt tab into Avid's Symphony. Obviously, that's a command tab for all of my Mac friends out there. And as you can see, inside of my sequences bin, I have two audio files. I have, appropriately enough, a voiceover track. And I have another music track from Rampant Design Tools. So the first thing I'm obviously going to need to drop in, actually, in this case, I think what we're going to do is we're going to drop in our music track. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to select the entire clip. Now, we're going to adjust this music track based on how long our voiceover is. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this uh, music track actually onto tracks two and three. So what I want to do here is just create a new sequence. We're going to add an extra audio track by simply pressing Control and U on Windows, Command and U on the Mac. And we're just going to repatch our audio channels here. We're going to turn video off because we don't need it. And I'm simply going to hit B on the keyboard to edit that clip in. Now, as you can see, I have my waveforms turned on. If I wanted to turn those off, I have a shortcut mapped onto my composer window right here, waveform. Or, of course, I can actually come right over here to our little easy uh, easy menu, or as I like to call it, the hamburger. We can come up to audio data and simply just turn waveform off. But I'm okay with leaving it on for right now. So what we're going to do next is we're going to grab our voiceover. And as soon as I play this here, so we can take a listen to it. So as you can see, we have some very Okay, cool you can see the only thing we have going on with it is that it is only on the left channel inside here. Inside of Adobe's Audition. Okay, so I'm happy with that. And what we're going to do here is I'm just going to switch over here to the source side just so that I can see where this starts. We can mark an in point and it ends right about there. So we can mark an out point. And I think we're going to come down to about three seconds here before we have our VO come in. So I'm just going to hit plus three on the keyboard. We're going to mark that as our in point and we're going to make sure that we have only audio one selected. I'm going to hit B here. And this is really going to be how long our music is going to go. Maybe we'll have it go maybe another three seconds here. And I'm just going to have it fade out at that point. So what we're going to do is just select everything. I'm just going to cut all of that out by simply hitting X on the keyboard. That's X on both Mac and Windows. And let's just put a dissolve in here. And we'll just say that it's ending. I'll just say add. And I think what I'm going to do here is just lower the audio. Now this is obviously for the purposes of us working on this here. Now you can see we got something going on here, which is that our channel two is actually the right track and channel three is the left track. Now the easiest way to get around that, because it's actually reversed our tracks, is we're just going to add another audio track here. And I'm just going to move this down one track just like that so we have left and right going. Perfect. Okay. Now, first of all, like I said, we're going to lower this audio here a little bit. We'll just bring it down to be minus 10. I think that's probably pretty good. And like I also said, we're going to need to mono this uh, track right here, our narration track. Now to, to mono that, very easy, what we're going to do is with the audio tool open, we're simply going to come up to track one. You'll see right now it's set to L100. I'm simply going to select that. I'm going to hit zero on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows, and you'll see by hitting zero and hitting enter, we're going to mid that channel. Now if I solo it here, and I come back to the beginning, I hit play now. Well, as you can see, we have some very cool It is now mono. We're going to take and we're going to export nice. the use inside of Adobe's Audition. Now, what we're going to do for our own reference, just so that when we play this back in the suite for the client, is that we're going to come in, and I'm just going to increase the volume of that by 3 dB. Now, remember, this is all just for the purposes of monitoring in the edit room. Once the audio engineer gets a hold of it, they're really going to take it and do whatever they want, or, you know, not really what they want, but really what they need to do to it to make it sound the absolute best it can possibly sound with what they've been given. So if I'm happy with the way that my fantastic sound design is going, what I can do now is I can actually get this set up to export for post audio. But there is one last important thing that we do need. And that is, of course, some kind of a picture reference for our sound engineer. Now, why would they want that? Well, they're obviously going to want that to make sure that all of the shots that you have in your sequence are in sync with the audio. So what we're going to do is we're just going to throw some clips in here. And since we're talking about motocross here, why don't we just throw some motocross footage in here? Very cool. There's going to be some short shots here that we're going to put into track one here. 
And I'll just come down here. It'll look very good. We've already got that marked. Now you can see, because this is showing me that it's yellow, what that's basically telling me is that I'm not set up in the right uh, the right, I'm, not, I'm actually not in HD mode right now. If I come back to format, you'll see the project type is set to 23976P NTSC. What I'm going to do is just switch that back just for right now, just so that we're working in HD here. And we're just going to drop a couple more clips in here. We'll hit B here. There we go. And we might only have space for one more. We'll just hit T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to select uh, that empty gap. We'll hit B to edit our clip in. I'm just going to add some dissolves in here quickly. Hit the backslash key. We're going to apply this to all transitions. Uh, maybe we'll just make it 12 frames. I think 24 is too long here. Simply say add. There we go. We'll put a fade in off the top. Starting and at the tail. Very cool. Okay. So this is good to go because what we actually are going to do here is we're going to export things in two, two steps. We're going to export the audio first and then we're going to come back and we're going to export the video. Now, what's also important to keep in mind before we export, and I'm just going to open Audition here is that Audition only supports OMF import. Now, how do I know that? Well, I know that because if I come to File, and I come down to Import, and I say File, you'll see that if I come over to All Supported Media, I have OMF located right down here, but AAF is not an option. Now, I'm not talking about AIFF. I'm talking about AFF, okay? So OMF is the only option that we have. So we need to keep that in mind when we're setting up our export options. So what I'm going to do is simply hit Cancel. We'll just minimize Audition here. I'm going to come back into Symphony and let's set up our export. Okay. Now, like I said, I just switched back to HD, but believe it or not, we're going to actually export this file as standard definition. Why am I going to do that? Well, I don't really need to give the audio engineer an HD quality file. He only needs it for sync reference. So why am I going to give him a massive size file when I can give him a DV file that's going to work just as well? So let's come to Format. Let's just switch this back to be DV NTSC 23976. We're just going to make sure that we mark the whole timeline here, just like such. And what we're going to do is simply right click. I'm just going to turn my solo off here. We'll right click and say export. And what we're going to do is we're just going to export this to the desktop. I think I'll create a new folder on the desktop here. We'll call it audio export for post. And we're going to double click on that folder. And what we're going to do is we're going to come down and we're going to click on options. Now, like I said, we're going to want to export an OMF file. So we're going to navigate up to export as. We're going to drop that down. And we're going to select OMF 2.0. Now, in this case, we're going to export all audio tracks in the sequence. What we're going to do is the export method is not going to be linked to. It's not going to be copy. We're going to consolidate all of the media. Now, this is where you can get in. And what's going to happen is, is that Symphony is actually going to take all the files and it's going to make copies of them. And we're going to actually embed it into the OMF file. What I always suggest is adding handles. Now, in most cases, two seconds is probably more than what you'll need. So you can simply punch in 48 frames because we are working in a 24 frame project. I'm going to punch in 48 frames to make sure that I've got two seconds on either side of each one of the edits so that I'm covered. Now, I can include rendered audio effects. I can render all audio effects. And I can even add audio mix down tracks if I want to. In most cases, you're probably going to leave most of these deselected. We're not going to convert any audio sample rates because we're already working at 48 kilohertz. We're not going to change the audio bit depth. And we're not going to convert any audio files because right now we're working in WAVE, which is perfectly good for the Windows machine that I'm working on. Now, you'll see right down here at the bottom, the audio is set to media drive, not what we want. I'm going to drop that down, and I'm going to say embed this audio in the OMF. Now, as soon as I do, you'll see I've got a few less options than I had before. But believe it or not, we're actually all set to go. So what I'm going to do is simply say save as. We're going to call this OMF export for audio post. There we go. I'll say OK. And what I'm going to do is actually now just cancel out. Why? Because I want to set up the video as well. What we're going to do is we're going to right click. We're going to say export. We're going to come back into our options. We're going to come right back up to export as. And I'm going to select QuickTime Movie. Now what I want to do is I'm going to use a custom codec here. We're going to come into Format Options. You'll see right now H.264 is what things are set as, but I don't want that. I actually want DV NTSC right there. We'll set the quality to be best. We're working in interlace. The aspect ratio is actually 16 by 9. We'll say OK. The sound right now is set to 32, which we don't want. We're going to want 44. Now, this is just in case you want to export audio as a reference to stick onto the file. What we'll do is we'll set the bit rate to be 128. I'll say OK. We don't want a fast start. I'll say OK. 
And we want to make sure that our export, because we're exporting as DV, we're going to want to make sure that we export as 720 by 480, which is right here, 720 by 480. Again, remember, set your color levels however you want, and we're going to want to leave the display aspect ratio to be native. Again, save as. We'll call this DV NTSC for audio post as well. We'll say OK. I'm going to say save, and why don't we just export the video first? So we'll call this video for reference. We'll say go. Now you'll see that this takes a little bit of time. It's actually not too bad. Our timeline's 14 seconds. It's taking a little bit less than real time to export this, which is always a huge plus. Now, what we're also going to do, again, right click. We're going to say export. We're going to switch our export setting to be OMF export for audio. Now you'll see something's going on here. We didn't set something right here. You'll see this is set to QuickTime Reference for some reason. So let's just switch this back here quickly. We know that this is going to be all the same. We're going to consolidate, which is fine, even though I'm pretty much using most of everything here, 48 frames, and we're going to embed. There we go, OMF2, so we'll say Save. And what we're going to do is, again, call this Moto Cross for Audio Post. I'll say Save. Now, if I want to verify that what actually happened was it saved my preset, easy way to tell, come into Settings. You'll see right now it's set to OMF for audio export. If I double click on it, there we go. We're all set to go. Not sure why that didn't save the first time. It's probably user error, which, you know, it happens from time to time. You're going to see what has also happened is since I chose to consolidate that audio when I exported it, what happened was, was that Symphony created a duplicate sequence and called it Untitled Sequence Export 01. And here is the consolidated media that it made when it exported that OMF. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to minimize Symphony for one second here. You'll see I'm going to come to this folder on the desktop called again Audio Export for Post. You'll see there's only two files in here, a video file for reference and this Motocross for Audio Post. Now you'll see that if I hover over top of it, it's actually almost six megabytes big. Why is that? Well, that's because it has the audio actually included inside of this file. The OMF is acting like a container that's going to hold all of this media. Okay. So now what do we do when our audio guy comes in and sits down in front of Audition? Well, it's actually very straightforward. What we're going to do is we're going to come down. We're going to come back into Audition. I actually have Audition already running here. We're going to navigate up to File. I'm going to come down to Import, and I'm going to say File. We're going to come to the Desktop, and I'm going to select that uh, OMF, the Motocross for Audio Post, and I'm going to say Open. Now what's going to happen is the first thing that Audition is going to do is it's going to say, well, hold on a second. There's audio in this file. I see it there. Where do you want me to extract this audio to so that I can work with it? So what I'm going to do is inside of the audio export for post, we'll just make a new folder and we'll call it raw audio. We'll send it to there. I'm going to say go and you'll see now what has happened is, is that this OMF has been imported into Audition. And if you take a look down here at the end, the dissolve, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to alt tab back in a symphony here. The dissolve that I actually had at the end of my music track has carried over into Audition. You can see it right here. Now, what I'm going to do is just minimize Audition for a second. I'll minimize symphony here. You'll see there's that folder that was created. And inside of that is my three audio files. You'll see what was also created was the Audition peak data. Now, three audio files for the three audio tracks that I have here. And you'll see that if I come back to Audition, it even added that empty audio track that I had there before that I didn't actually have anything on. Now, last but certainly not least, what I do need to do is I need to come back and I need to import that video file. So what I'm going to do is say Import File. It's Video for Reference. You'll see now that it's located right up here inside my project. I'm just going to take it. I'm going to drag it and drop it here into the project like such. And if I hit Play, so as you can see, we have some very cool motocross footage here that we're going to take and we're going to export to use inside of Adobe's Audition. So take a look at that. What I have is I have a perfect transition from Symphony into a third-party application like Adobe's Audition to do my audio mix. So I hope you see that getting in and setting up Symphony or Media Composer to export your audio for a post audio house, or in this case, even on the same machine to have an external engineer come in and do your audio mix is very simple. And once you set it up, it's really a set it and forget it, and you'll have the audio mix for your show in no time flat. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com.
dot com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.